It's like walking into Dr. Seuss's stories and finding all of the characters you love. Since its opening, the new Dr. Seuss Museum has been an instantaneous success, attracting national and international tourists. But what does a wildly popular museum dedicated to a children's author mean for the urban revitalization of his hometown city of Springfield, Massachusetts? We became a part of his beautiful world. Thank you for bringing us his passion and his art. This heartfelt message was written in a comment book by a museum visitor on June 3, 2017, during our grand opening for the Amazing World of Dr. Seuss Museum. The museum was designed as a tribute to Springfield-born icon of children's literature, Theodore Seuss Geisel. By consensus, Dr. Seuss was the greatest American picture book artist of the modern era. Every one of the 44 children's books that he wrote are still in print. 26 years after his death in 1991, Dr. Seuss is arguably more popular than ever. An estimated 600 million Dr. Seuss books have been translated into 17 languages and sold in more than 95 countries around the world. Like the Grinch's heart on Christmas morning, Dr. Seuss's claim to popular culture has grown at least three sizes since his passing and shows no signs of slowing down. As home to the Dr. Seuss National Memorial Sculpture Garden, the Springfield Museums have a unique relationship with the Dr. Seuss brand. Ted Geisel grew up in Springfield. He was inspired by what he saw when he was a boy exploring the city and its many landmarks, streetscapes, and geographical features like the expanse of rolling hills, twisting pathways, and fantastic zoo at Forest Park. His creative genius was fostered by his life in Springfield, and it framed his outlook on the world. In thinking about developing a museum dedicated to Dr. Seuss, our challenge was how to create an experience that would immerse our visitors in a Seussian world that would make them feel like they had walked into one of his books and are now entering this special universe of his imagination. The museums have a long history of delivering experiences based on cultural content. First established in 1857, the Springfield Museums are an unparalleled visitor attraction located in the heart of downtown Springfield. Situated Smithsonian style around a central green, the interdisciplinary complex includes two world-class art museums, a science museum, and a museum of Springfield history. Many of our exhibitions are traditional displays of artifacts and artwork that are explained by labels or audiovisual interpretation. However, more and more, our visitors are looking for a different level of interactivity. We live in a world where people no longer want to just look at a picture, they want to be in the picture, and they want to celebrate that participation through photographs of themselves interacting with characters or entering a three-dimensional environment. They do not want to be the audience. They want to be actors on the stage, engaging in and contributing to the story. When visitors enter the Dr. Seuss Museum, they find themselves awash in the spectacular colors of Dr. Seuss characters and the scenes that he invented for them. The interactive exhibits include digital technology, larger than life-size sculptures, and floor-to-ceiling murals. Visitors can sit on the seven hump wump of gump and play rhyming word games in the Green Eggs and Ham Cave. The museum also includes three-dimensional replicas of the monuments and places that inspired Ted Geisel when he was growing up. They can walk through the facade of his childhood home into a replica of his bedroom where his parents used to let him draw on the walls. Using a large digital computer screen, they can make their own drawings just as Ted did when he made his first attempts to express his artistic vision. Like the heroes in many Dr. Seuss stories, the museum enables visitors to experience the power of fantasy by allowing them to leave the ordinary world behind so they can have fun with his mischievous characters and crazy constructions. 
The amazing world of Dr. Seuss Museum also provides our visitors with an intimate glimpse into Ted Geisel's private world. Ted's stepdaughters, Lark Gray Diamond Cates and Lee Gray Diamond, donated their collections of Dr. Seuss memorabilia, artwork, and furniture so that the museums could install a recreation of Ted's studio and sitting room on the second floor of the museum. The display includes the drawing desk that he worked on, the chair that he sat in, and the rotary telephone that he used to conduct business with his publishing house in New York City. His colored pencils are on view, as are his brushes, oil paints, and other tools of the trade. In the adjacent sitting room, visitors can see his couch, breakfast chair, and bookshelves lined with his favorite volumes. The recreation is so authentic that visitors have the feeling that Dr. Seuss just stepped out of the room. Just as the first floor enables children and families to participate in the amazing world of his imagination, the second floor allows them to enter his personal space and see him through the eyes of the family who loved him as a husband, stepfather, and granduncle. Through this exciting new attraction, the Springfield Museums have been able to capitalize on the enormous market appeal of Dr. Seuss. The new museum has been extensively covered by local, regional, national, and international media outlets, including the NBC Nightly News and the Today Show. Since our opening on June 3rd, our attendance has tripled, and the visitation has included tourists from around the country and across the world. But what does a museum dedicated to a children's author mean for his hometown of Springfield, a once bustling urban center that faded over the decades during the post-industrial era? The answer is, just as the new Dr. Seuss Museum is reinvigorating the Springfield Museums, Seussifying the downtown district could transform the urban landscape of concrete buildings and asphalt into a whimsical world filled with unexpected sculptures and colorful environments that invite discovery and promote participation. In other words, a Seussian world could be the perfect foil for creative placemaking, the burgeoning art of developing space, a sidewalk, a hallway, a concrete pad under a highway overpass into a place that is interesting and inviting and a place that people want to be. Creative placemaking acts as a catalyst for urban theater that enlivens streets and squares. Through connecting new and regenerated places to existing cultural assets, it provides authenticity and local ownership and supports social and economic development. The city that Ted knew during his boyhood was visually arresting and filled with eclectic Victorian architecture that drew from cultures from around the world. Here you could find an office building topped with an onion-shaped dome or the sculpture of an Egyptian sphinx resting on a winding staircase. The interesting streetscapes of buildings and monuments were the backdrop for a mixture of commerce, business, and leisure. During the day, the streets were filled with pedestrians, trolleys, trucks, and automobiles. Merchants traveled door to door selling their wares from fanciful trucks decked out to attract attention. At night, the city's mini theaters, music halls, and dining establishments provided entertainment for residents and visitors. After his classes, Ted could walk from his high school to take music lessons in a building across from City Hall, or rush to his job working as an usher in the Court Square Theater. The compact downtown district was connected and walkable, and residents young and old could enact their daily lives on an urban stage that was vibrant, filled with people from all cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds and ever-changing. Over time, Springfield, like many industrial cities, has lost its connectivity. A downtown population of workers leaves the city at night to drive home to their houses in the suburbs. The city's walkability has been compromised by major thoroughfares that are not pedestrian friendly. However, a newly established cultural district is revitalizing once deserted city squares with pop-up galleries, music events, and art making. 
Nondescript utility boxes located along the streets have been turned into painted artworks by a diverse core of artists. Pedestrians are invited to sit down to engage in spontaneous music making at decorated pianos placed in outdoor locations. Picnic benches painted by artists and high school students have been set up at the base of office towers to invite workers to sit outside during their lunch hour as a way to animate sidewalks and green spaces. The arts-based downtown revitalization efforts are also being fueled by the promise of jobs generated by the major MGM resort development in the city's south end. A large apartment complex across from the Springfield Museums is undergoing extensive upgrades so it can be transformed into safe and affordable housing for resort employees. A pocket park sited within this apartment complex was originally designed to connect the museums with the downtown district with a dramatic staircase and handicapped accessible elevator. The park also featured public art, a waterfall, and landscaping. For many years, this park has been closed and the landscaping has become neglected and overgrown. Currently, the museums are working with the real estate firm managing the apartment complex and city officials to open the park to restore the connection between the museums and the city below. Plans include lighting displays and projections, and a plaza for performances, festivals, and outdoor eateries. Susification of the park and the entire cultural district could add another level of activity by introducing Susan-inspired public art in unexpected spaces. For example, an interactive catwalk inspired by Dr. Seuss's most famous tall-hatted character could guide visitors through the downtown to discover seating areas and historic sites. Instead of utilitarian street lamps, visitors would see brightly lit Susian trees. Public benches would take the form of curvilinear Susian sculptures. Private enterprise and public organizations could work together to transform Springfield into an experienced destination that pays homage to a beloved native son. By drawing on the power of imagination and channeling the playful whimsy of Dr. Seuss, the city could recapture the visual excitement and densely populated streets and spaces that inspired the creative genius of Theodore Seuss Geisel.